Hi, you again. Welcome home. Welcome back, or if it's your first time, then what took you so long? Welcome to the house of Devay, my name is Reese, and oh, what can I say, today we are going on a journey. A journey through space, time, and show tunes in something that I'm calling the 10 times that Glee has caused me to have an existential crisis. See, I'm telling you, I have the mind of a master, master, I have the mind of a mastermind, what's that? I don't know, but and I'm so creative like that. <laughs> I think we all remember scenes such as... <laughs> when a girl walks in with a nitty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. Looking back now as an adult on the show, I do think, what the... Thirteen years ago, Glee aired on TV for the first time. I would have been 11. Wow. And like a lot of people, it changed my life a little bit. Are you not embarrassed? I don't know, it was the first time I saw gay people on TV. It was the first time the spotlight was shone on the outcasts, I guess. I don't know. I was always into choir, I was always singing, I was always dancing, if you can believe that. But Glee made it look fun and cool. But looking back now as an adult, wow. Ryan Murphy, jail. So here I am, ranking the 10 times that Glee caused me to have an existential crisis. And let me tell you, it wasn't difficult to know which ones were gonna be in the top. Will Schuster. Not this. I'm looking at you, babe. Guantanamo Bay, it's calling your name. Okay, I'm gonna try and Explain these in a way that's gonna not get me copyright blocked if I play the scenes for too long So like bear with me like stick to the narrative. We're gonna have some fun um, Let's jump right in number 10 number 10 is definitely my favorite and I will tell you why It's camp. It's queer. It's funny, but what the fuck who would mash up? Let's have a kiki and turkey lurkey time um, It was definitely a choice. I mean Shangela's in there it's turkey lurkey time! Let's have a kiki, mother. Okay, so the plot really behind this scene is that Kurt and Rachel are having Thanksgiving alone. So Isabella, who's played by Sarah Jessica Parker, invites loads of people around. These people include Shangela. I don't have a sugar daddy. I've never had a sugar daddy. If I wanted a sugar daddy, yes, I probably could go out and get one because I am what? Sickening. You could never have a sugar daddy because you are not that kind of girl. They have no idea these people are coming over, so they choose to sing the song let's have a kiki which would be fine but mash it up with turkey lurkey the way that rachel berry slides in there with the it's turkey lurkey time do you know what she deserved to be cancelled straight to jail do not pass go do not collect 200 pounds <laughs> who am i it's turkey lurkey time. um what's up with that that's quite enough of that. Okay, this next one's quite brilliant actually. So Sue Sylvester, classic villain, who probably was actually the only sane person on the show, decides to try online dating and the only person that the website matches her up with is herself. So she, adorned in an Adidas wedding dress, decides to marry herself in a wedding that's officiated by herself. Dearly beloved, we are gathered today to join Sue Sylvester and Sue Sylvester in holy matrimony. I will say, ultimate flex, good for you, Sue. Still, Ryan Murphy. What? <sighs> Number eight. This one's, this one's a weird one. They're all rogue, but this one's just Quinn for Bray singing I'm Still Standing whilst in a wheelchair after being hit by a truck. I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still standing. Great song, Elton John, Chef's Kiss, but in a wheelchair, I'm still standing. Anyway, moving on. Number seven is just the whole performance of You're Having My Baby. Whoa, the seed inside your baby to you. So, just for some context, Finn thinks that he's got Quinn pregnant through them being in a hot tub together. She's actually pregnant from Puck. 
happen. Quinn invites Finn round to meet her parents. He then goes on to sing this song to them. I'm just gonna let you watch a few clips because honestly, questionable. Having my baby. You're the woman I love and I love what it's doing to you. Yeah. Weird flex from <laughs> Number six. Ridiculous is the only way to describe this. Just watch this scene, just watch this scene. In a himself into the pool. Mr. Shu is, we'll get to him. Don't worry, we'll get to him. Matthew Morrison. You're about to feel some heat. Number five is Mr. Schuster's first appearance in the top 10. It's getting weird. To be honest, I'm surprised he made it this far without being named and shamed, but pretty much all of these next well, I mean, to be honest, all of them were Mr. Schuster's fault. He really is the blueprint for disaster. Uh, how would I describe Mr. Schuster? He's just... He's just an oily man, baby. I don't know, like... I used to think he was really fit, and, like, now I look back and... Flavorless? I don't know. If you think about it, he's probably, like, what, a 28-year-old man dancing around with these 16-year-olds? Anyway, back to the chart. Number five is where Mr. Schuster only picks white people to do the solos in the show. And this leads a lot of the minority members of the cast to leave, like such as Mercedes and Santana. Instead of having like a gorgeous moment to really tackle race issues in Glee and to really tackle these narratives, he turns to them and says, Because you're all minorities, you're in the Glee club. When I'm telling you, when I watched this back aged 20, two or three. Oh my god, what a f***ing idiot. It's just something else. It's literally out of this world that he would even say that. Number four, Tina Cohen Chang. A very proven singer, very talented, has literally been in the series since the first episode. The only solo at any competition that she ever has is, wait for it. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. Ryan Murphy, the police are on the way. I hope it was worth it. Just like, of all the songs you could have given her, just a touch of sensitivity, please. Just a touch. I don't know, it just seemed pretty tasteless. A lot of these ones, a lot of the top t the top five, they're mainly tasteless. They're not even shit writing, to be fair. I can't believe this one even happened. Like, I can't believe... This is more of a series of events, so stay with me, stay with me. Okay, so I think the start of the episode is that Blaine can't work. Blaine, what are you doing? Tina, Tina, get out! And then Mr. Schuster decides that he wants to do a performance with all of the Glee Club twerking. And Sue finds out and rightfully shuts it down because they're, what, 16-year-olds? 17-year-olds, maybe? Um, oh my god! What is that? So then Mr. Schuster, a grown man baby decides the right thing to do in this instance is to do a performance to the already controversial song blurred lines everybody get up yeah needless to say that's just a bit fucked isn't it mr schuster therapy babes therapy number two is just the whole performance of what does the fox say ding, ding, ding. That, it really could have, we didn't need that. No one asked for that, no one wanted this. Okay, so as far as I remember, I'm literally doing this all off the top of my head, by the way, like this isn't, I just have them written down in order. I'm relaying all this information back to you, like off the top of my head. So if it's not right, call me out, but I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> so Blaine is being too bossy and everyone starts to call him out, but then there's a gas leak at McKinley and Blaine starts hallucinating that everyone is puppets and they like teach him a lesson about like being too bossy and being too up his own ass basically. And then as a thank you present or to say sorry to everyone, he makes them all puppets that are like of them. And then at the end, they do a performance of what does the fox say? And I'm gonna play a few clips because it's just very confused. Once again, there's a lot to unpack. Just so many questions. So many questions. Yeah. And then number one, obviously we get to the king of whatever f 
Castle Glee was living in. Uh, and that is just any rap by Mr. Schuster. There's Ice Ice Baby. Oh, VIP. Let's kick it. Gold Digger. 18 years, 18 years. The Thong Song. Baby. The Thong, the Thong, Thong, Thong. Buster Move. The list does go on. Not honourable mentions, the performance of Toxic. <laughs> so I guess not even any rap by Mr. Schuster, pretty much any performance by Mr. Schuster has sent me into a bit of a spiral. 10 moments in Glee that caused me to have an existential crisis. But don't get me wrong, I love the show. I loved the I loved, I loved the show. Doesn't excuse those. I mean, there were plenty more moments that I could have tapped into. I don't know. If this does well, maybe there'll be a part two. But for now, I think that's quite enough horror for today. Horrifying, but great. Nonetheless, I very much enjoyed myself. I hope you have too. This is the House of Duvet. My name is Reese. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. Make sure to put those post notifications on so you know whenever I'm going to post about Mr. Schuster's war crimes. All of my social media will be down in the description, so if you want to keep up to date with what's going on, go ahead and give me a follow. Anyways, thanks for popping by. It's been lovely having you over. Um, I'll see you same time next week. <sighs> no. Why did I wink? Do 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 do